everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be going through 12 must try watercolor supplies. And I'm not going to be going through the basics, so I'm gonna be leaving out watercolor paints, the paper, and also the paint brushes. I'm going to be going through other supplies that I often use to help make my watercolor paintings look a lot more interesting and to add some cool effects to them. All of the materials and supplies that I will be talking about will be listed in the description. But let's get straight on with the video and with the first supply which is masking fluid. Now if you haven't heard of masking fluid you can either get it in a pen like this where it has a little nib which means it's really useful for details or you can get it in a bottle which means it's easier to apply over large areas. And masking fluid is great for preserving highlights because what it is is basically you apply it to areas you want to keep white and then it dries and forms this latex which means that the watercolour can't get onto those areas and so you just apply it anywhere where you want a bit of a highlight and you want to preserve it and not have to worry about getting any paint on those areas and then once you've finished you can just rub it off with your fingers or with a tea towel like I like to do. I also used it here for this mountain painting and I used it to preserve the highlights and it just means that you don't have to worry about going around them and working around all those tiny little highlights. Now let's move on to the second supply which is binder clips and these are something that I've been using for the last sort of six months and I find that they work really well with sketchbooks and what they basically will do is help to prevent warping and buckling and the paper creating those weird waves. So what I like to do is use this with my sketchbooks and I just hold that piece of paper that I'm painting on to all of the other pieces of paper in the sketchbook and it just helps keep it in place and sometimes when you're using a sketchbook, especially if you're outside sketching, the paper can blow up and it can be really annoying. So this just helps to keep it down and prevents it from warping. I really like using them and you can get them really cheap off Amazon. The third supply is coloured pencils and so these are great to add on top of your watercolour paintings to add a bit of definition or detail. I used it here for this portrait, I started off going in with watercolours and adding all of the base layers and adding some really cool effects. I wanted the hair to be really expressive but the face to be quite detailed so I used the coloured pencils to add a lot of definition and detail to the face. I find that it's a lot easier to get detail and definition with coloured pencils than it is with watercolours because it's a lot easier to control the pencils compared to watercolours. So these are great to use to add in final touches and I definitely recommend giving them a go with watercolour. These two mediums work so well together. The fourth supply is gouache and a white gel pen. I use these both for the same purpose, so I thought I'd put them together. And the only gouache that I use for my watercolour paintings is white gouache. And I also use a white gel pen and I use both of these things for highlights. They are great to drop into wet watercolour to give these really cool clustered effects or going in and adding them at the end to add in a few highlights like I did with this robin with the top of the branches. I also used it with this tree painting because the trees were snowy to add the look of the snowy trees and you can just use it wherever you need to add a highlight in your painting. What's great about these, these supplies is that they are really opaque compared to watercolours so those highlights will really show up. Now before I talk about the next supply, if you guys want to follow along with my real time tutorials where I take you through all of my different techniques for how to use watercolours and coloured pencils and charcoal and lots of different mediums, then over on my Patreon I've got over 300 real time tutorials that you can follow along to for just a small amount per month. But if a monthly membership isn't right for you or you just want to focus on one specific medium or subject matter then over on my website I've got lots of individual courses to help you master the techniques that you need to improve your drawing and painting skills. For those of you that are looking to improve your watercolour skills then I have got a great course on there called Expressive Animals in Watercolours and this takes you through five real time paintings where I take you through all of the techniques that I talk about in this video and I really show you how to master watercolours. 
I've also got a few other watercolour courses on there as well as courses for realistic drawings and coloured pencils and charcoals so I recommend checking them out there will definitely be something on there to suit your needs and for those of you that are interested I am currently offering 15% off all of my courses if you use the code SAVE15 at checkout. So I'll leave a link in the description to both my Patreon and my website if you want to check out what I have to offer. But let's move on to the next supply which is washi tape. Now this is great for two reasons. One, it can help you prevent warping if you use the tape to tape your work to a desk and also it creates a really beautiful border around your watercolour paintings that give a more finished and professional look. So I really like washi tape and I like getting it in this, these really cool colours and fun patterns. And so I just tape this around my painting at all four sides and it just means that the watercolour won't bleed over those edges and you'll get a really nice border which I think just adds a really nice look to the piece. But it can really help prevent warping if you're not using a sketchbook, if you're just using paper, if you tape the painting to the desk it will really really help to stop that buckling effect. Moving on to the next supply which is inks and I like to use metallic inks with my watercolours just to make the watercolours look a little more unique and interesting. I have this gold ink that I really like to use, I think it just gives it a really nice look and so they are a great medium that you can use with your watercolours. I like to use the wet on wet technique with them so that the inks bleed into the watercolours, I think it gives a really nice result. And here you can see me just using some pink and the gold together. And they are two mediums that do work really well together. The next supply is a white wax pencil. I've got a coloured pencil here, but you can use just a wax crayon. And this will help to create a resist. So when you apply this to your watercolour paper and then try and add the watercolour on top, because it's a waxy medium, the watercolour won't be able to go on top of that white coloured pencil, which means that you can create highlights and you can preserve highlights like we did with the masking fluid. Here I am painting a small beach scene and I first applied the coloured pencil where I wanted the highlights in the water to be and then I just went ahead and painted like usual and then once I let that watercolour dry you can see that the white of the coloured pencil shows through and I'm just going in with an eraser just to remove any bits of watercolour that have stained on top of that white coloured pencil and that just really helps to make those highlights pop. Moving on to the next supply and this is salt and I've talked about this a lot on my channel so this is definitely something that I use a lot and it's because it creates such a cool and interesting effect. Now you can use any type of salt for this, you can use normal table salt or chunkier salt like sea salt and what you do with this is that you sprinkle it onto wet watercolour once you've finished your wash of watercolour, make sure that it's still wet and it creates these really interesting effects that work really well with wintry landscapes or to create snowy scenery. I think they look really cool and also for flowers I've used them for as well to create the look of blossom and they just create this really awesome effect which is really easy to achieve. Now it doesn't work with all types of watercolour paper so if you're having problems with this technique it is probably the paper that you are using. Another tool that I really like to use a lot is either a toothbrush or a flat brush depending on what I have on hand and I use these tools to create the look of stars using the white gouache and I've done this quite a few times with different watercolour paintings and it's great because it can create those tiny, tiny dots which really resemble stars. As you can see here, all I do is load up my flat brush with the white gouache and then I just spray it onto any area where I want to create a starry sky and I've used this for galaxies or even lighter skies like I'm doing here and it gives such a twinkly effect which really really looks realistic and it looks really natural as well because it naturally creates a variety in sizes to the stars as well. So as you can see here I use that to create a galaxy painting and it worked really well. 
The next tool that I use is a water dropper and this is really good to use if you have too much water on your paper and it's formed like a pool of water and you want to get rid of some of that. You can easily suck it up using the pipette. The next supply that I use is cling film and this is another around the house supply which creates a really cool effect. Two ways that I've used it is to create the look of ice and also stems and veins for leaves and plants. And basically, again, you use this on wet watercolors and you can pull and twist the cling film into a shape that you want and you let it dry and you can see that it creates this effect which really does resemble ice. So you could use it to create an ice lake or something like that. Or if you pull it into these longer strands, then it looks really good for leaves to create the look of veins and stems as well. So I've used that for both floral paintings and for winter landscapes. Moving on to the final supply, and this is tissue. And this is not only great to sort of blot your paintbrushes and get rid and clean your paintbrushes, but also to create really cool effects in your watercolor paintings because it can lift up your watercolors to reveal highlights. And the most common way that I use this is for clouds. But I've also used it in other ways as well, like just pulling up some of the paint just to reveal some highlights like I did in this jellyfish painting. And so those are the 12 must try art supplies that I like to use with my watercolor paintings. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here and even tick that bell icon so you do get notified on my future videos. But that is it from me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.